to this boiler, um, it's got no hot water, the report is. So let's take a look and see what happens. I've actually just opened the tap and it's fired up, but the tenants reported it hasn't worked all weekend. So we'll just take a look inside the boiler in case the diverter valve has been leaking. Just drop the front of the case down. And as expected, you can see all the water coming from there. That'll have reached up into that motor. And it sometimes can trip the electrics. That gives it away, but we're gonna change that and that. So I'll show you how we do it. So we're gonna get onto that little drain tap in there. It's a bit normally they're finger tight. And we will just get them grips on there. That's it, undo that and get fingers in. And that is draining out into the bucket down there. There we go. Now I haven't isolated the boiler because it's on a high point. So we'll just yeah. let that drain. Isolated the power, the normal checks. So I'm going to take that wire off. That's been leaking for a little while, that is. There we go. You can see in there where the water's got to it. That's been leaking for quite a while. So now we need to get that motor off. I think it's probably going to snap off first. Oh, bit of movement, or is it? No. It's completely rusted. That has been leaking for ages. So we're going to have to unscrew the motor and the diverter at the same time. Right, so because that's snapped, we're just going to have to turn that, but we're also going to have to probably turn the head at the same time to get it all out, just make it a bit more awkward. Ah, that pipe's wedged it. So we'll just undo that and see if we can lift it out. Right, so I've unscrewed that and that'll lift it off, but it's snapped off inside. So, we're going to have to undo that bottom nut and push it all up now. But, as you can see, that's been leaking into there for quite a while. That's part of it. Lots of, um, I don't think the system was probably flushed very well when it was fitted. Lots of magnetite in there breaking off so you can get the rest of it out now. Right, because that's snapped, I'm going to remove this valve here, like that. And then what I'm going to do, I'll try pushing my finger up there to remove it. That's not going to reach, it's stuck. So I'm going to have to get something like a screwdriver just up there and just tap it up to get the rest of the diverter out. Right, so just give it a tap with a hammer and a screwdriver. And now it's left me with that. Wow, look at all the sludge on that. Oh, no wonder that's failed. So, none of that black stuff around there should be there. Look at it all. So, you might have to recommend the system gets a bit of water treatment and a clean power flush maybe. But yeah, so that's how to get them valves out if you're struggling and they've snapped. Go from underneath, tap up with a screwdriver and it'll come out. So now we've got to fit the new one. There's the new motor. There's the new um, diverter cartridge. And as you can see, it's an all brass construction now. None of the plastics used anymore. So that looks better all round. And then that clip that snapped off, we've got a spare one just there. So, right, we'll put it together. Get the spare on that. Just give it a lip, not too tight. And then we can fit the new motor. That just goes in there like that. And I've got to put my camera down while I do this, because I've just got to push that down and it'll spring up. So there we go. So I've just pushed down on the motor and pushed the clip in and that's it. Just got to connect the electric cable in it now, but I just want to double check again that there's no water in there and I'm going to dry that out first. It's in place and I've just noticed, get some light on there. When look at this auto air vent, that's been leaking as well so I'm just going to change that and that's as straightforward as unscrewing it out and I should think because of all that sludge and muck in there we're going to be getting the same 
problem with that not sealing. So we'll take that out and we'll have a quick look at the inside there. It's got finger tight now. Yeah, if you shine a light a bit better on that, if you look at that, all the bits of muck, there we go, it's better. If you look at that, all the muck's on it, so it's clogged up and the water's escaping from the top. So we'll just put a new one of those in. So that's uh, the new auto air vent gone in, just turned in, just nipped up, don't need to be over tight. And we'll just loosen the little air pit and um, we'll fill that up in a moment. I will recommend with this is do away with the old fibre washers. They all go hard and brittle like that. And I've got a couple of new ones there. I always carry them in my service kit. So now we're just going to fix that back in place. All right, so just tighten that up. Tighten the rear one up. Right, just to tighten that back into place. A little tip, a little backing nut under there. Don't do them too tight. Sometimes if you've got one of these boilers and it's making loud vibrations, just loosening that little backing nut a touch can just stop that or reduce it. So there's top tip of the day. Right then, so we've got that all changed so the hot water will work. Got rid of the leak. So we've got rid of the leak on the um, auto air vent up there. We're just going to do all our gas checks now and get the details filled out. So, job done. Hope you enjoyed watching that one. Just come to this job and there's water running down the um, tun dish. So that's coming from the unvented cylinder. So, what we're going to do is show you how we replace that. Turn the water off. With a hot tap till it stops. Connect our foot pump to the expansion vessel. And as you can see, it's on zero bar. We need that to be on free. So we'll start pumping up. Done. And we've got no drip down there, job done. 